Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about how long it takes to become a surgeon here in the UK. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Dr. Jude. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and content creator here in London. I did all of my postgraduate training here in London. Though I went to medical school up in the north of England and I had a brief stint in the US and in Canada for my fellowship, but I'm back. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how long it takes to become a surgeon. What are the different steps that we have to go through? What are the different exams? And talk about what it was like for me going through all of that. And hopefully you can decide whether this is something that you want to now embark on. First things first, if you do like this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It just tells YouTube not to bench this video. Let me know in the comments if I've left anything out and subscribe and hit the notification bell because you want to be notified when these videos drop. So if you're thinking about becoming a surgeon, now is a fantastic time to do it because for the last few years, recruitment has, I won't say struggled, but it's kind of taken a bit of a drop. And I think it's no longer cool to work hard and spend many years training for something. People nowadays are enticed by material things relatively soon and it's no surprise that surgery takes a long time. So if that doesn't put you off, go for it. And it is a really rewarding career. We don't chase money, we're helping people. Our work is ethical, I can sleep at night. If you enjoy science, it's a fantastic and interesting world to be a part of. It is changing regularly. We have lots of international conferences and meetings. So it really is a global community of specialists and professionals. And honestly, there's never a dull moment. I absolutely love this career and I do recommend it for anybody who enjoys being challenged and wants to really immerse themselves in a, in a career that will, that will just continue to flourish. Now, I'm sure everybody knows this, but the first thing you have to do is go to medical school. And in the UK, thankfully, this is an undergraduate degree. So you can do it straight out of school and it's a minimum of five years. A lot of people will intercalate, which will make it six years. And basically what that means is you do a BSc in your degree, which is usually three years, but you can do it in one year, which makes your total time in university six years. But then you'll come out with your medical degree and a bachelor of science. I didn't personally do that because I didn't want to spend that extra year in medical school, but that was just me. It's becoming more and more common, but I don't think you have to. One of the things that helped me the most with getting into medical school and progressing through training was regularly reading and keeping up to date with advances in science and healthcare. I remember reading an article in New Scientist magazine almost 20 years ago about IVF treatment, then feeling confident enough to discuss it when it came up in my medical school interview. Today, New Scientist remains a key resource for keeping inspired and informed about what is happening in the world of science. For me, it's been a go-to for info on the vaccine development and its efficacy, but I've also enjoyed reading some articles on the science of healthy eating and weight loss, mindfulness, renewable energy, and the explosion of technology in healthcare. With a subscription, you'll get a print copy mailed to your house every week and access to over 30 years of back issues online and via the app. There are 200 on-demand talks and access to subscriber-only events. And the best part is the amazing promotion that they are doing at the moment, and that is six magazines for one pound. That's a no-brainer. Whether you want to know more about the power of the mind, the science of healthy eating and healthy living, the latest advances in technology or the environment, new scientists will certainly have something that will satisfy your appetite and keep you up to date. So, be sure to use the link in the description to sign up and get six issues for one pound. Now, traditionally, surgeons didn't go to medical school. That's why we're actually called Mr. in the UK because we were actually more like apprentices and we kind of trained on the job. Many started out as barbers um, and then it wasn't until many years later that it merged with medical training and we then went to medical school. I'm not really quite sure why surgery is so proud of that history but because of that we are called mister when you graduate medical school you apply for the foundation program and this is a kind of nationwide program in which you are deployed to different hospitals around the country to do a two-year internship program the first year used to be called your pre-registration house officer year we still refer to them as house officers but 
technically they're actually called FY1s, which means foundation year one. You'll see this terminology if you're doing your research. And so I'm just trying to clarify it for you. And then when you go into the second year of that program, you become a foundation year two doctor. So once you complete your two year foundation program, which will involve rotations between medicine, surgery, general practice, accident and emergency, and maybe some more specialist uh, sectors if you're interested, such as nuclear medicine or pharmacology if those are things that you want to experience you can do that in your foundation years and when you finish that you'll get your competencies and then you can then apply for core surgical training or core medical training which is two years if you want to become a GP you can go and do it at that stage and your GP training is three years after your foundation training which means to become a fully trained GP after medical school is only five years and so a lot of people are enticed by that and put off by the length of training in surgery and go down the GP route, which isn't, which isn't bad. Depends on what your vision for your own life is. Anyway, you do your core surgical training, which is two years, core surgical year one and core surgical year two. In that time, you'll do rotations within the different surgical specialties. Now, obviously, if you're more interested in orthopedics or general surgery or plastics, you try and get it more weighted towards what you want to do and if you're interested in orthopedics you might also try and do some some vascular surgery or some plastic surgery in that time just to make you a more well-rounded surgeon and in that time you have to complete your exam which is called your MRCS which is your membership to the Royal College of Surgeons and technically at this point it is when you become a mister and you are kind of entered into the surgical college and you technically become a surgeon and um, I think that one I think might be my plaque you get this plaque when you when you do that um, and that's a really nice diploma but um, yeah you get a nice qualification it's hard work and it's expensive but it's great so when you finish your core surgical training you then apply for your specialty training which is a six-year program very similar to doing your residency as you would do in the US by this point you're already four years out of medical school because you've done foundation year one year two and then core surgical year one and core surgical year two but they're not linked so that is a competitive step and if you don't get it the first time recruitment is once a year so you will wait a following year to get onto it and unfortunately that will add time to your training and that year in between if you don't get it people will go and teach they'll teach anatomy at medical schools they'll go and do research or they'll take jobs within hospitals just doing uh, working within the specialty that they're trying to get into when you get onto your appointed specialty program again this is all nationally appointed so you will go and compete against the entire country and then once you're given what we call a training number you will be allocated a specific area of the country depending on where you ranked and if you rank highly then you should get your first choice if you know you're going for a more competitive area then you obviously need to make yourself more of a competitive candidate and the things you can do will be things like doing research write, writing and publishing lots of teaching even additional degrees but the advice that was given to me and I still stick to it is to be a very good doctor to be very knowledgeable to study and read and that's kind of how I got my number and so during that six years you will rotate through different hospitals on your program you will have to sit a number of in training exams and assessments some of them are practical, viva, written. It's gonna be early starts, late finishes, on calls, weekends, night shifts, lots of surgeries, lots of clinics, lots of traveling for courses, conferences. You'll meet some really good friends. You'll meet some really good mentors. Um, you'll be very busy. You'll see some amazing cases. You may get the opportunity to travel around the world as well. Um, and then hopefully when you come out the other side, if you're not broken, you should be ready, hopefully, to, to then go on to the next step. But actually the next step now is fellowship training. So then when you've done your six year program, which puts you now at 10 years post-graduation, that's if you haven't taken any breaks in between and you've been successful at each stage, then you do one to two years of fellowships. And I did my first year fellowship in Canada and then I came back and did a second year fellowship in London. And then when you've done your two years of fellowships, most people will then apply and then take on either a locum or a permanent consultant position at that stage. So for me, that was 12 years of graduate training after medical school. What I'll say is, though it seems like a long time when you speak about it, the actual journey is really 
enjoyable. You meet some fantastic people who are doctors, but even people who work in industry. You work with some state of art technology. You'll be going to courses, practicing some really impressive surgeries that just will blow your mind. So it will be fun. It will fly by, it will be hard work. It'll be busy, it'll be challenging, but it's just it's just a whirlwind that you it's thoroughly enjoyable anyways hopefully that was a short and sweet video for you let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to know i'll try and put it in more videos and stay tuned be sure to follow me on instagram because i just post regular bits and bobs that you might find useful and post a lot of my working day and it's a great community on there so come and join the tribe and yeah see you in the next one